I um, read health articles, and there's an occasional article that I find very disturbing. Um, I read occasional things about concerns about antibiotic resistant bacteria. Do you feel that animal agriculture has anything to do with this? Well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, we're now, I remember when I first was doing the research on the World Peace Diet, uh, the, the statistics were that we were using about 50% of the antibiotics uh, we produced in the United States for animal agriculture. Then, uh, a few years later, it was 60%. Then, a few years later, it was 70%. A few years later, now, I think it's 80, it's probably close to 90% of the antibiotics that we're producing in the United States are not for humans, they're for animals. And, uh, there's both uh, to try to uh, obviously to reduce um, their, the inflammation and suffer and, and uh, infections that they're experiencing, but also uh, antibiotics are used mixed in with the feed routinely because they scientists discovered that when you just feed animals antibiotics, they put it's a they gain weight. It's just profitable. They gain more weight than the cost of the antibiotics. So. Um, so we're using enormous amounts of antibiotics, and this, of course, combined with the fact that we have these animals hyper-confined in the most hideously uh, uh, stressful and, uh, 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 and um, unclean environments, uh, causes bacteria to proliferate and, uh, and also to create new strains of bacteria, uh, given uh, all the antibiotic use. And, and so we now are finding, it's actually starting to happen, that the medical establishment is running out of uh, medicines that, that will work against the new super, so-called superbugs, which are a direct product of animal agriculture. There have been some articles I've read predicting basically that, you know, Western medicine, it, its main weapon in the arsenal <laughs> that it has uh, is antibiotics. You know, they can sort of go in there and fight against those germs. And if that doesn't work anymore, uh, then what's, what are we going to do? You know, that, that basic idea. And uh, it opens the doorway for uh, all kinds of doomsday scenarios. So I think we have to realize that this is um, an extremely serious problem also. It's one of, you know, extremely serious problem number 794, <laughs> I guess, you know, in agriculture. <laughs> that uh, if we, uh, it, 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 that just everything about animal agriculture is, is, is anti-life. You know, it's, it's your, your, your and, and nature, I think, is naturally going to try to, um, to get rid of the cancer of animal agriculture some way or another. And so we see uh, bacteria now proliferating, bacteria that we cannot perhaps uh, uh, ever be able to stop. So I think, again, it's important for us to uh, understand all of these uh, interconnections and, and realize that going to, going to a plant-based diet is, is so much simpler and so much more ethical and so much more in harmony with nature. As soon as we begin with animal agriculture, it's, it's, it just cre it creates a never-ending web of violence and violence always begets more violence and the violence always boomerangs back uh, to us inevitably. There's no way or, uh, it's not going to. <laughs> As, as Will said, this antibiotic problem is a real problem. It's a major one. The, the estimate for the annual cost to treat people who have diseases that are antibiotic resistant. So literally, we, the, the cost associated with animal agriculture causing antibiotic resistance in humans is $23.5 billion. That, that's like the budget of a small country. That's a, that's a huge number. This is, this is probably an interesting time to point out that antibiotics is also one of the areas where the FDA has found it virtually impossible to regulate the industry. P groups have brought lawsuits saying, look, this stuff is unsafe. It's your job to, to regulate things that are unsafe. Won't you do something? And they've fought the lawsuits. The, most recently, they issued voluntary guidelines that recommend that producers and veterinarians only prescribe antibiotics for medical reasons to animals, not at sub-therapeutic levels, which are associated with growth promotion, just for medical reasons. So what's happening now? The industry has simply changed the way it has categorized what it's doing, and producers simply say, 
I, I want a vet on staff who's going to write prescriptions that say these animals need this stuff for medical reasons. So, there's, so far, there's not been any significant drop in the um, level of antibiotics used in the industry.